Good afternoon, everyone. Got several things to start off with today. Okay, first an announcement. On Thursday, Secretary Pompeo will depart on a trip to Latin America to further strengthen our partnerships with like-minded countries and to, uh, and to keep all of our citizens safe and prosperous. Following on the Secretary's trip to the region in April, a frequent high-level engagement by the Deputy Secretary, Undersecretary for Political Affairs, and other U.S. government officials in the last few months, this trip highlights the priority the Trump administration places on strengthening our ties in the Western Hemisphere. From July 19th to the 21st, the Secretary will visit Buenos Aires, Argentina, Ecuador, Mexico City, San Salvador, where he will expand cooperation on security issues, reinforce U.S. commitment uh, to human rights and democracy, particularly support for the people of Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela and their struggle for freedom, and to enhance economic partnerships and to expand economic uh, opportunities for our citizens. Before heading to the region, the Secretary will travel to San Juan, Puerto Rico on July 18th, where he will meet with the State Department staff to express his appreciation for all of their hard work. The Secretary will then travel to Buenos Aires, Argentina, where he will join regional leaders for the second Western Hemisphere Counterterrorism Ministerial to deepen cooperation in the fight against terrorism and transnational crime on July 19th. This ministerial will also commemorate the 25th anniversary of the deadly Iran-backed attack on the Argentine Jewish Mutual Aid Society Community Center in Buenos Aires. While also in Buenos Aires, the Secretary will meet individually with Argentine President Macri, Chilean Foreign Minister Rivera, and Bahamian Foreign Minister Henfeld. In Ecuador on July 20th, the Secretary will meet with President Moreno and Foreign Minister Valencia as we reinvigorate bilateral cooperation in areas of mutual interest, including strengthening democratic and transparent governance, expanding commercial ties, and increasing cultural and educational exchanges. The Secretary's visit, his first visit to Ecuador, and the first Secretary of State to visit Ecuador since 2010, indicates that the relationship between the United States and Ecuador is stronger than ever. On July 21st, Secretary Pompeo will head to Mexico City, where he will meet with Foreign Minister Eberard to continue ongoing conversations with the Mexican government on illegal migration, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, and promoting opportunity and prosperity in southern Mexico. He will then travel to San Salvador, El Salvador, where he will mark the first visit by a Secretary of State to that country in 10 years. Secretary Pompeo will meet with pre the President to discuss our shared interest in reducing illegal migration and support the President's efforts to create economic opportunity, combat corruption, and to build a strong, self-reliant El Salvador. The Secretary will also reinforce our bilateral security cooperation by signing a lease extension for U.S. use of facilities at the airport, which has played an important role for the U.S. and the region in support of counter-narcotics operations. Before heading back to D.C., Secretary Pompeo will stop in Orlando, Florida on July 22nd, where he will speak with the Veterans of Foreign Wars President, deliver a speech at the VFW, and meet with the VFW Kansas delegation. I'm not ready to, for questions yet, I, but I'll I know, be back. but on that, you said something Thanks. that I think you might want to clarify, and okay. that would be about the Puerto Rico part of it. You want to explain, as the statement did, which State Department staff in Puerto Rico he's going to be meeting with, because I think that people might be confused into thinking that, you know, Puerto Rico is part of the United States, so it doesn't have a U.S. embassy or consulate in it, right? So these people work for what part of the State Department? I don't know. They work for the Commemorating past. five years since MH17, <laughs> we remember the victims who lost their lives in the downing of Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 over Ukraine tomorrow, on July 17, 2014. It's been five years since 298 innocent civilians lost their lives. We extend our deepest sympathies to the families and friends of the victims. As we said in our June statement, we call on Russia to ensure that individuals currently in Russia who were indicted by Dutch prosecutor prosecutors in June will face justice. We fully support the ongoing work of the Dutch authorities and the joint investigation team to bring those responsible to justice. Next on Tunisia, the Secretary today met with Tunisian Foreign Minister 
uh, as a part of the third U.S.-Tunisian strategic dialogue to reinforce the strong relationship between our two countries. In support of this engagement, officials from our governments review Tunisia's political, economic, and security, and security situation and welcome upcoming parliamentary and presidential elections as important milestones for Tunisian democracy. The strategic dialogue capped off a series of high-level bilateral engagements. The Defense Department hosted the 33rd Joint Military Commission in April, and the United States Trade Representative organized the 8th Trade and Investment Council in May, and the Departments of State and Commerce held the second Joint Economic Commission in June. The United States strongly supports Tunisia, and we recognize the importance of a successful and secure Tunisia to the entire region. The Secretary today also met with Colombian Foreign Minister, uh, in Washington, D.C., the two leaders discussed the ongoing political and man-made humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. The Secretary expressed gratitude for Colombia's continued leadership and extraordinary generosity in hosting displaced Venezuelans. The Secretary and the Foreign Minister also discussed recent progress on combating narcotics and the need to do more to meet the shared goal of reducing cocoa cultivation and cocaine production by half by the end of 2023. Matt? Can I um, just ask you? Uh, what is going on um, in terms of um, discussions, deliberations about Turkey and its purchase of the S-400s. I saw that the President said at the top of, or during mm -hmm. the Cabinet meeting today that the F-35s are no longer a go, but he did say we that. had all been, you know, that had been previewed well mm -hmm. in advance, even if the final, final, final decision had been made. But there are other things that uh, mm -hmm. could be triggered under CATSA and I'm just wondering where things stand in the, in the, in the discussion. Right. So the uh, Secretary and the President are examining all of the options that are um, in the CATSA legislation. Um, I think that we've been pretty clear from this podium what the ramifications could be, and I think that you saw those ramifications today when the President talked about um, uh, the inability of Turkey now to have the F-35. Um, as it relates to which uh, sanctions options will be chosen, we don't preview those sanctions in advance, but um, know that the Secretary is obviously uh, reviewing and working on this with the President. Right, but if you had to, if you, if you could, if you, if you, where are we in the process? Are they close? Are they far away? Are they, you know, middle distance? What, when do you? They're in, they're in the process. As soon as we have an announcement to make, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, yeah. um, you said, you know, you're not going to preview which sanctions they're going to use. Does that mean that they will, the, the prevailing wisdom is they're, they are going to go ahead with sanctions? There's not an effort to try to maybe do a workaround or waive those sanctions? Or is that part of the discussion at all? Um, I don't know what workaround you're referring to. Um, I mean, I think we could all go to Google.com and look at the CATSA sanctions and see the 12 options that are available there um, and, and what can be done in that legislation. And I think that the Secretary and the President will make a decision based off what they're required to do uh, according to U.S. law. And once they have that decision, we'll certainly inform all of you. Mm -hmm. The EU also it imposed some sanctions for yeah. Turkish drilling in Cyprus economic zone. And Turkey strongly rejected that. What's your position on the issue? We've talked about, I think we've talked about this before here. Um, we certainly uh, have expressed similar, similarly to the Europeans, we've expressed deep concerns um, over uh, Turkey's uh, assertions that it is going to continue to drill um, in these waters off of uh, Cyprus. And I think that, um, I'm pretty sure that I released a statement on this back on July 9th. And so I refer you back to that statement. I could read it, but you could probably easily get a copy. Um, but again, we, we similarly uh, uh, share the concern that the Europeans have displayed today. Yes, hi. Yes, uh, hi. Uh, as you know, there is a report that uh, Imran Khan, Pakistan Prime Minister, will visit Washington next week. Yes. Uh, regarding Pakistan, there are human rights violations happening in mm -hmm. Kuwaita, Balochistan, mm -hmm. and other parts of Pakistan, and some Afghan Azara people living in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the U.S. administration will discuss about this important issue? So we have actually talked about this quite a bit here from the State Department. Um, number one, you could always go to our human rights report. But secondly, I think that's a timely question because uh, we have the religious freedom ministerial that's going on right now. I think many of you have probably attended some of the sessions. Uh, I will be there tomorrow, so I encourage you <laughs> to attend tomorrow. Um, and as it relates uh, to the um, report that Ambassador Brownback put, puts out that he spoke about at the podium um, last week, he's actually, they've talked about this issue as it relates to Pakistan. So um, the visit, of course, 
between um, Khan and, and President Trump will be at the White House. And that's, of course, there. I'll leave it to the White House to talk more about what will happen uh, uh, in that visit. But here from the State Department regarding the issue that we've referred to, we have, I think, at least two instances um, where we have talked about this in our in our public reports. Thank can you. Hi, Sean. On that, uh, can we stay on the same topic? Go ahead, Sean. Oh. <laughs> sure, uh, a different topic, uh, North Korea. OK. Uh, can North we Korea. stay on the same topic? Um, Did I call on you? I didn't know I called on Sean. Thanks. Sure. Uh, North Korea. Um, the uh, North Korea has made a statement saying that uh, um, talks that have been had been agreed to by President Trump and by uh, yes. Chairman Kim will not go forward if there are joint drills going ahead between the United States and the Republic of Korea. Uh, what's the U.S. response to that? Will drills also be, again, uh, either uh, taken down to a smaller level or postponed? Right. Uh, do you expect talks to go ahead? So I'll leave it up to the Department of Defense to speak to those because that's under their purview. Um, we saw, of course, overnight the press statements um, from uh, a person within the foreign ministry. You know, we would say, from our perspective, um, we would, you know, hope that uh, no one would try to block um, in their government and our own government uh, the ability for President Trump and Chairman Kim uh, to get uh, to make progress um, on the commitments that they made to each other in Vietnam. Uh, we will look forward, of course, to resuming those uh, negotiations, and and you know we hope to talk about all ways that we can advance progress um, on these commitments. And so um, I think that, as we've said here, we we talk quite a bit about North Korea from the podium because there's always a report here and a report there, and I think. Our position, we talked about this actually pretty extensively um, last week, is it, going to remain the same, that the President feels very confident, the Secretary was there, Steve Bingham was there. They feel confident in the uh, discussions and the meetings uh, that they had with uh, Chairman Kim at the DMZ, and we <coughs> hope uh, you know Steve Bingham and his team will quietly continue to make progress behind the scenes. Well, uh, uh, comment just yes. there. Are you suggesting that there are people in the U.S. government who are trying to prevent talks from Chairman Kim and or the talk, talks that Chairman Kim and President Trump have agreed to from going on? I'm not suggesting, you suggesting that anyone would ever undermine the president. A, some kind of Jennifer. a... Jennifer. Um, just a bit ago in the cabinet meeting, Secretary Pompeo said that Iran for the first time had agreed mm -hmm. to negotiate on missiles. Can you say what comments he was referring to? Um, the Iranian foreign ministry has pushed for, rather their UN mission has pushed back on the comments to Lester Holt. The characterization of that is, are those the comments he's referring the to? The Iranian foreign ministry pushed back on which comments? Sorry, the UN mission, the oh, Iranian okay. UN mission has pushed back on the characterization that those comments were at all about missiles. Uh, I didn't see what the what the mission said. I'll, I'll definitely look that up and respond to that specifically. Um, as far as the president and the secretary's comments uh, in the meeting, I'll certainly, I think they should speak for themselves. I, I think it goes to show, though, what we have talked about consistently um, from, this uh, from this podium. Uh, our messaging has been that we are willing to talk to the Iranians. The president and the secretary um, has said several times that they will, will talk without preconditions. Um, and the Iranians just need to show that they're ready uh, to talk. Um, this, of course, you know, I think one of the more frustrating things about this is that the Iranian regime, and Brian Hook talks about this quite a bit, often meets our diplomacy with continued aggressive behavior in the region. Um, we saw, of course, when President Abe uh, was in Iran, uh, the attacks on the Japanese uh, tankers. We've seen um, the regime attacking Emirati, Norwegian ta tankers. We also saw, what was it, two weeks ago now? My days start to run together. We saw the IRGC Navy harassed a British festival. I think that was two weeks ago. Um, so despite some of the rhetoric, I think, that has been inflamed in Washington over the past two months that this administration was somehow rushing to war, uh, we think it was, th this was quite the opposite. And we think that this is, you know, just a continuation of what we said, that we will meet and talk and negotiate with the Iranians without preconditions. But they should know that the 12 steps that the Secretary lined out over a year ago uh, will be on the table. And that is the destabilizing behavior that they're going to have to address beyond um, just their, their, uh, the purported program. But can you say, was he talking about a different, com what comments was he referring to when he said they would be talking without? Yeah, I think he was responding to the media report. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you said that, that uh, Special Representative Began continues to make, and his team continue to make quiet progress with the North Koreans. Has he had much success since the impromptu meeting at the demilitarized zone in, mm -hmm. in communicating with his North Korean counterparts? What has the contact been like? So that's, the, I, I know, I certainly understand why you have to ask that. But uh, when and where and how the U.S. has talks, whether it's the Beacon or Pompeo or the President or anyone else, um, is not going to be announced here from the podium. We're going to give this team space to do the work. 
Um, I think the secretary laid it out best. You know, he said that he hopes these working level negotiations with the North Koreans. He said this in an interview yesterday with someone from your network. Mm -hmm. um, will come to the day uh, to the table with uh, ideas that they didn't have the first time, and we hope that they can be a little more creative too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, again, we're going to give them the time and space to, to make this happen. And I understand why you have to ask that, but I think as it gets into the TikTok of who's meeting when and how, we're just not going to get into that. And yet. you can't say North if they Korea. have met yet. No. Hola, Hola North, North Korea. Korea. Yeah. Thank you, Morgan, uh, on the sanctions against North Korea. Do you mm -hmm. think uh, South Korea is doing well mm -hmm. in implementing UN sanctions against North Korea? Or do you have anything, uh, evidence for North and uh, mm -hmm. South Korea as any violation, sanctions against North Korea? I don't have a specific update about South Korea per se, but we would continue to encourage uh, every country uh, in the world to abide by U.S. sanctions, to abide by comprehensive uh, U.N. sanctions, of course, as well. Um, and we would hope especially uh, that all of our friends and allies would continue to do so. Anybody else have anything on North Korea? Yes. North Korea? Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to clarify your mm -hmm. stance on the joint military drill. Uh, do you think it's You're going to have to talk to DOD about but that. Yeah. I'm not going to comment on that. Is there daylight between State Department and the DOD? No, it's just that we, we don't do military drills at the State Department. Do you think it's That's in my reserve duty. But isn't it Go ahead, Saeed. Productive? Thank you, Morgan. I have two quick questions on the Palestinian issue. Okay. <clears throat> Last week, it was said that uh, a Palestinian official, uh, Mr. Majid Faraj, he's the head of uh, Palestinian intelligence, someone who guarded a close, a close relationship with Secretary of State from day when he was at CIA. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us if he was here, if he met with, with anyone, and so on? Uh, no. What was the nature of his visit? I don't have anything okay. on that. Thank and you, sir. Just to follow up, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, on the Palestinian issue. Yesterday, the Israeli army shot a, a boy, a 10-year-old boy, in mm -hmm. the head. It was a sniper targeted shot and so on. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, was, we are, they were demonstrating uh, in Kufur Kadum. It's a small village that was closed yeah. by the Israeli army. Mm. Uh, we're certainly aware of these reports. Um, I, I don't have uh, ex complete details yet regarding the incident. And of course, I think the government of Israel would be happy to uh, answer this question as well. Uh, I would say as a general matter um, at the State Department, we continue to encourage both sides to take appropriate actions to ease tensions and to build an environment that is conducive for peace. But these are, you know, these are villagers mm -hmm. that are protesting against the occupying force. I mean, the, yeah. the people in authority. I, I'm sure right. that the embassy no here in the that. U.S. or the or the government of Israel, their foreign ministry, would be happy to continue along the questions. But that's all I have. Can I for ask that a quick question on Iran? Uh -huh. Really, a sure. quick follow. -up. <clears throat> it seems that the foreign minister, Eduard uh, Zarif, is restricted to three places in New York: you know, the mission, yes. the UN, and the ambassador's house. Is that mm -hmm. isn't that in violation of the protocol between the host country? and the United Nations because they have a 25-mile radius. Can you no, share with us something? No, it's not a violation. Mm -hmm. Thank Carol? You. I just wanted to follow on Dan's question about Iran. Could okay. You, could you shine any light at all on how you communicate with Tehran? Uh, I, this may have been, a, as you say, it came from a, mm -hmm. a media report uh, that the Secretary had this impression. But when you need to get a message to Tehran or, you know, on, on say, potential breakthrough on negotiations, what kind of back channels do you have available? I don't think that that's something that I could discuss from the podium. Yeah. Hi. Just quick, quick, quick question on Iran. And uh, with regard to the international coalition to mm -hmm. safeguard shipping in the home strait, um, mm -hmm. specifically, which country um, had the U.S. requested to join the coalition? I don't have a list on that. I mean, that's something that I know as we've traveled uh, throughout the Middle East and Europe, I mean, for all parties that are have, a, have an interest, in, including those in Asia um, as well, that's something that we've been talking to a host of countries about. I don't have the specific number, um, but as we continue, uh, you know, to urge um, de-escalation uh, in the region and continue to encourage Iran to stop their provocative actions, that's a part of the larger conversations that we have with, with many friends and allies. Uh, just, just to pull Hi. up. Uh, no, they, that's okay. Let's go to the lady behind yeah, you, please. Uh, the, the U.S. has already requested the Japan to join the coalition. Japan, how about Japan? The, the U.S. has already requested Japan to join. Oh, them. have we asked Japan? I'd have to double check. I would assume we have, but I would have to double check. Yes. Hi, where um, are you from? Uh, AWPS News, Chris Great. Anderson. Um, do you have anything on Algeria 
There are ongoing reports of journalists mm -hmm. that are within the civilian population and people being beaten up. Well, our, I don't have anything specific on Algeria. I would say that we talked about um, just last week about the podium, about the uh, um, the journalism symposium that uh, Phil Reeker attended. Forgive me for, for forgetting the specific name, uh, but it was in London last week, and that was, of course, on media freedom. Freedom. We talked about that quite extensively here from uh, from the podium last week. It's something that we, of course, support. Um, and as you can tell, while the commission, uh, excuse me, while the, the ministerial this week is on religious freedom, Ambassador Brownback uh, had talked in an interview about how more religious religious freedom opens up to more freedoms, uh, more of the ability for, for, spree, for free speech, for journalistic freedoms. So that's obviously something that we try, I personally try to talk about as uh, often as possible from this podium. So thank you for asking. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Um, I have a follow-up and a question. The follow-up is that um, uh, <laughs> Imran, Imran Khan's nice. uh, visit, will he be visiting uh, and meeting have meetings in this building also? Uh, so this is an official White House visit, so at the moment we're going to let them speak to the details of the visit. Okay, and uh, the, sec the question is that do you, are you satisfied with the um, recent visit of uh, two USDR officials to Delhi uh, about U.S.-India trade talks? Right. Well, I was actually just in uh, Delhi with um, the secretary where he met with his counterpart, um, and, and they were, of course, incredibly uh, effective meetings. We talked there quite quite a bit, both uh, in our meetings and to the media, and, and many, and you probably know this already, how India is, uh, is United States is, uh, is India's most important trading partner. Um, I believe we're their top uh, market for exports. And... Um, you know, as, as it relates to our trade relationship, and the President has said this, uh, excuse me, the Secretary said this as well, uh, when we were in India, that we see a lot of um, uh, opportunity for, for growth in our relationship. We see enormous potential. Um, and he's confident, the Secretary is confident, he's reiterated this, that any sort of trade uh, negotiations that we have, any issues can be worked through um, because of the friendship between our two countries. It's a quick uh, one. Mm -hmm. and do you have any uh, comments on that uh, Karpa Kartarpur uh, corridor that is being uh, built between India and Pakistan for Sikh pilgrims? Yeah. That was certainly a good news report, wasn't it? Uh, you know, we encourage it. Anything that increases people-to-people -people ties between India and Pakistan is something that we're incredibly supportive of. Thank you. Ben? Yeah, thank you, Morgan. Um, this morning, Special Representative Brian Hook uh, said that this Friday he was inviting members of the diplomatic corps of the State Department mm -hmm. to present a, a maritime security initiative. Um, do you know who these diplomatic corps members are? And he also mentioned he was going to give a briefing. Do you know who's invited? Was to his group? was his discussion off the record? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Was uh, was his discussion off the record? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Yeah. Um, it was broadcast. Yeah. Oh, I have it confused with another one. Uh, in terms of um, in terms of who he's inviting, we'll get that answer for you. I don't I don't have the invitee list with me, but but we'll we'll be happy to to share. I think you know Brian is go, goes around the world, of course, working on his portfolio, um, not only on Iran but in his advisory capacities uh, to the secretary as well. But just one more. Sure. Was that the, the security initiative he was talking about? Was that this the Project Sentinel that was? discussed on the Secretary's trip to the Middle East a couple weeks ago? I think it's been called various names. Yeah, um, we've been just, I've been informally referring it to the Marit as the Maritime Security Initiative, um, but um, I would double check with Brian if we, which name we're going to officially But it's the same, it. that's what he was talking about, the same. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's one more email. Mm -hmm. um, there is a French Iranian dual national a professor at Sciences Po who was arrested in Iran. Uh, what was the name? Uh, I think I remember this. Uh, uh, I believe she's a French Iranian duo national. I don't know if the State Department has anything to say about her detention and the, the nature of the, the charges against her. You know, I saw that report this morning. I, I think maybe I heard about that report on NPR, actually. Um, and we do, we do have information for you on that, Sean. And I, I don't think that I remember to bring it with me, but we'll, we'll get it to you. Absolutely. I want to go to Egypt, though. Egypt? So, yeah, last month, this uh, working group on Egypt uh, they, they call themselves a, a Carnegie Endowment, wrote a letter mm -hmm. to the secretary talking about Americans uh, jailed they, unjustly yeah. in Egypt. And yesterday, I think they said and published the secretary's response in which yes. he said, yes, this is an issue of concern to mm -hmm. us, and et cetera. 
Sir, I wanted to ask about one specific or two specific um, detainees at, um, who are not American citizens but whose families are American. That's uh, um, Ola um, Al Karadawi and, and her husband Hossam Kala. Mm -hmm. And they've been in now for roughly two years each, and the wife has just been again today had her detention extended for another 15 days. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you telling the Egyptians about? Um, about this, about what, what, what your concerns are in, in, this, in yeah. this specific case. Just so we don't conflate the two issues, if I could just go back to the, the first issue that you were referring to, uh, the letter from Carnegie, which, of course, you read this, the secretary's response. Um, I just want to, the reason why I want to, to respond to that directly is because I think it's important to note that we do take all allegations of abuse and torture extremely uh, seriously. Um, and that's, of course, why we read and responded um, to that letter. Uh, and then, so again, not to conflate the two, but the second issue on the on the case of this uh, couple, uh, Al Karadari and her husband, uh, I believe, is Hossam Kalaf. Um, we actually cited this case uh, in our annual human rights report on Egypt, so I refer to you to that. Um, the State Department has met with uh, the family members, um, which uh, some of them are American citizens, to discuss this case. Uh, we actually did so again yesterday. Uh, anything further in terms of, as it relates to their incarceration, the government of Egypt will have to answer, but uh, we are, um, we're meeting regularly as of yesterday. Was that here or there? Where, where do you know where that me meeting was? We met with the family, so I have to confirm. Okay. I, I don't know if the family happened to be in Egypt or in the U.S., but I'll confirm that. Okay, for you. and the uh, and uh, but uh, have you gone as far as to call for their release, or are you just saying that you're just expressing concern about the conditions of their detention? We're expressing concern about the conditions. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Any update about peace talks with the Taliban? Audio no, uh, we, t we did talk, I can't remember the which day I briefed last week, I think it was Thursday, but um, uh, we talked a little bit about um, uh, the Ambassador Khalilzad's travels. Uh, we, we just finished the seventh round of talks with the Taliban in which um, the Ambassador indicated that he had made um, substantial progress. Um, he was in Doha, and I believe I indicated last week that he was in uh, China. He had a previously uh, pre excuse me, scheduled meeting, trilateral meeting with China and Russia. Pakistan also joined the meeting. Um, so uh, we will certainly talk about what sort of specific update that we can give you. Um, but I don't think anything has uh, has changed in terms of public readouts since the seventh round of, of uh, talks with the Taliban, which happened last so week. Any Let's make that the last one. <coughs> sure. Me. Any update on the uh, FT adjutant secretary is still where did it to uh, You know, I actually emailed with him this morning because I saw some of the media reports that you're probably referring to, um, and uh, the assistant secretary told me that his schedule um, has not at all uh, changed. So I believe uh, late last week I gave all of you a readout, or, or excuse me, I previewed his travel schedule, um, and that hasn't changed at all. And I did confirm that with him myself this morning. Um, I will see some of you if you're covering the religious freedom uh, ministerial um, tomorrow. I'll see you there. And some of you are going on with us on the trip that we referenced at the beginning um, to WHA. So if you're not on the trip with me and you're not at the ministerial tomorrow, I will see you next week. Thank you.